Hello, my name's Ryan, and I'm going to give you a little rundown of my story of addiction. Um, so, when I was born, I was put up for adoption when I was six months old. Um, from what I know, my mother was on drugs and stuff, and I guess just didn't want me, so I was put up for adoption, and I was adopted by some older parents that was in their 50s when they adopted me. Um, my dad, when I say dad or mom, that's my adopted parents because that's the only parents I know. Um, my, my dad was an alcoholic, so I grew up um, going with him in bars and, and going around him and all of his buddies drinking and using and stuff like that. We moved to North Carolina from Illinois when I was five years old, four years old, we moved down to North Carolina. As I grew up, like I said, I was constantly around drinking and, and some drug using. I didn't see a whole lot, but like I did see some. Um, as I got older and uh, once my parents told me that, you know, that I was adopted, that my mother had put me up for adoption and stuff, I remember thinking, you know, that something was wrong with me. There was a reason why my mother didn't want me. And, um, you know, I, I constantly battled that in my head for the rest of my life. And um, as I got older, I began, you know, doing the normal things kids do, start smoking cigarettes in middle school, stuff like that. And it wasn't long before I started experimenting with other things. Once I got into high school, uh, me and some friends began drinking a lot. Um, we would skip school a lot of days and just go drink a lot until we got wasted and then come back and catch the bus to go home and stuff like that. I remember, though, when I would drink and do, you know, uh, smoke marijuana and stuff like that, it would it would take everything away like I and made me feel whole and and like I didn't have no worries and and I felt like I fit in when I was hanging around these people doing these things um as we all know addiction is a progressive disease and it, it continues to progress and I began trying different things throughout the beginning of high school um doing a lot of things mushroom, acid, um, pain pills, just you name it, pretty much doing whatever, whatever my buddies were doing. I failed ninth grade, went to 10th grade and ended up skipping school all the time and um, ended up, uh, my parents allowed me to quit school. Once I quit school, I had a lot of extra time on my hands. Um, and I began hanging out with these older people that did drugs and sold drugs and stuff like that. And I started getting inter introduced to a lot of other harder drugs, such as cocaine, meth, crack, those things. I got locked up for the first time at the age of, age of uh, 16 for stealing, stealing a, um, my mom's JCPenney card and going buying a bunch of stuff to trade for drugs that was just one of what would turn out to be many trips to jail and prison at the age of 19 i let a friend stick a needle in my arm for the first time and um i still remember that feeling like it was what i'd been looking for my whole life um i'd been looking for that feeling all along the whole time I'd been using and I'd finally found it. And, um, unfortunately that would be what took me downhill really fast. Um, I began shooting up at age 19. Once I did it the first time, I didn't want to do any kind of drug any other way. My drug of choice became more, more of whatever I could get. It didn't matter. Um, I used everything. As long as I could fit it into a U100 insulin syringe, then I was all for it. Um, I began stealing and doing other things to support my habit. Um, at the age of 18, before I started shooting up, I actually got charged for selling marijuana to an undercover cop. 
um, a guy I know set me up and that was my first ever felony charge. And I remember at that moment thinking, you know, well, now I'm a convict. I'm going to be a convicted felon. I'm never going to amount to anything. I'm never going to have a career or anything like that. Um, so I continue to use, um, continue to use, continue to get arrested in and out of jail and prison. Um, I used from the age of 13 to 34. I've been to jail probably 75 times, went, went to prison eight times, am a habitual felon. Um, in 2015, I got out of prison for the last time in like April and ended up getting out and going straight to using drugs again and selling drugs. And um, I used from April to July, and I remember... I didn't have nowhere to go. My parents had passed away in 2004. Um, when they passed away, I went to prison for eight to 10 months, got out of prison, had $26,000 in the bank. And I remember um, I, um, I spent $26,000 in a motel room bathroom in a matter of three weeks doing drugs um, buying any kind of drug I could find. Um, I went through all that money. I remember being, I would lock myself in the motel room, bathroom, and I was trying to shoot shots of dope big enough to kill me because I didn't want to live anymore. Like my parents were always like my safe haven, I always had a place to live. They was always there for me, you know, and then once they was gone, that was jerked out from under me. I was pretty much, you know, on my own, so it was always living on the streets, couch surfing, of course, you know, I became a liar, a thief, and a con, um, you know, if you was my friend, I'd, I'd steal your stuff and help you look for it, um, and, and I just continued to use to cover up the pain of losing my parents, um, and it kept digging me deeper and deeper into addiction, um, but like I said, in 2015, I, I got out of prison in April and used until July of 2015. And I remember sitting there one day and I'd run out of money, run out of drugs, and I was getting sick and I, I felt terrible and like I was just sick and tired of being sick and tired. I was miserable with who I was, like I couldn't look at myself in the mirror, like I hated who I'd become. My life was terrible. I didn't have anything but like one pair of clothes and a book bag. Um, and I was like, man, there's got to be more to life than this. Um, I had been in and out of uh, detoxes and psych wards probably 50 to 75 times. But I used to always just go check myself in to have a place to sleep and eat. It wasn't ever to get clean. But in 2015, when I got to the point to where I'd had enough and decided I wanted to get clean, then I knew where to go. I ended up going to detox. Um, and I remember at detox, you know, they, they all knew me by name because I, I was always coming in and out of there. Um, but I never was doing anything different. And they, they figured that was probably what was going to happen this time. Sorry, excuse me. And, um, at detox, I remember going to my counselor and telling her, I was like, look, I need somewhere to go when I leave here because um, if I don't have somewhere to go that's going to help me stay on the right path, then I'm going to go back to what I've always known. And that's doing drugs, using drugs, and the people that's involved in that. That's the only friends I had, or so-called friends. Um, I ended up getting into a place... Um, a men's halfway house um, in, in Morganton, North Carolina. And I went there and I remember, you know, the requirements they said was I had to do 90 meetings in 90 days, 12-step um, meetings. Um, and uh, I remember the first night I went to a 12-step meeting and, and I remember walking in and all these people's laughing and cutting up and having a good time. And, and my first thought is, man, they got to be high you know, um, because I didn't know how to laugh and cut up and have fun without being high because that's all I did my whole life. 
but I went in this meeting and, and, you know, I introduced myself as a newcomer and said, Hey, my name's Ryan and I'm an addict, you know, and I remember all these men in this meeting wrote down their phone numbers for me. All these people come up to me um, and gave me hugs and they was like, we love you. Keep coming back. And those were things that I wasn't used to because usually like if people seen me coming, they would lock their doors and turn out their lights and pretend to not be home because they knew I wanted something or I was going to steal something. You know, I did whatever I had to do to support my habit. Um, I, I stayed clean for a year from 2015 and uh, became a peer support specialist and started working in the field helping other um other people that was battling addiction problems um i also started taking um 12-step meetings into the prison that i was last in um after i'd been out long enough i started taking meetings into that prison and um with some other people and uh i realized right then that I had a passion to be able to help people just like me. You know, I wanted to help those people that are in jail and prison that that have addiction problems, you know, and they can't seem to get out of that vicious cycle that keeps us trapped, you know. Um, I stayed clean, you know, ended up becoming a alcohol and drug counselor. Um, when COVID hit, though, when COVID hit, they shut down a lot of meetings. Um, I began isolating a lot at home and not really uh, communicating with sponsor, not communicating with people in recovery, just pretty much working and, and not doing anything to work on my recovery. Um, and unfortunately, um, in January of this year, after six and a half years clean, I ended up relapsing. Um, like I said, I'd cut off all connections to, um, I, I'd quit communicating with my higher power, which I choose to call God. Um, I'd quit communicating with people in recovery. I'd quit going to meetings. I'd quit doing anything for myself, for my recovery, and for me to stay clean. Um, and I thought, you know, after six and a half years clean that, um, I'm okay now, you know, I've been clean this long, life's good, everything's going great, I'm, I'm okay. But what I quickly realized is either I'm working on my recovery or I'm working on a relapse. There's no in, in between for me, you know, it's either I'm going forward or I'm falling backward. There's no median. Um, unfortunately, I put myself in a position and went around people that I knew I, I had no business being around and at a place that I had no business being. And um, when somebody started, broke out a meth pipe and started hitting it, um, I didn't even think twice and was like, here, let me hit that. Even though like I know in the back of my mind where that takes me. Um, by the grace of God, I only used for four days. Um, while using, though, at this motel room, I remember a guy coming in and he had a bag of fentanyl as big as my hand. And I remember trying to buy some and everybody there was like, no, nah, you don't have no tolerance. It'll kill you. And, and, you know, when we're using drugs, we don't care. And I was like, so what? My money's not any good. You know, you won't sell me this, you know? Um, but I realize now that was God doing for me what I couldn't do for myself during that time, because had I gotten some of that, I would have um, overdosed and died most likely because during these four days of my relapse, I had done started shooting up again um, because for me, um, every time I go back to using, it takes me right back to where I was, you know, it, it don't start off easy and, and continue easy. I go straight to the extreme. Um, after four days, I ended up going and checking myself into, um, into the hospital for a week, um, and got back out of the hospital and, um, I've been clean now since uh, February 1st, um, but, you know, I still, 
even though I relapsed for a short period of time, it doesn't mean I lost all everything that I've learned or know. Um, you know, just because my clean date changed don't mean that I forgot everything that I've learned in recovery and in 12-step programs. Um, I am back involved in 12-step programs. Um, you know, ended up getting a new sponsor, back working steps, doing all the things I knew, need to do to stay clean one day at a time. Um, what I would say to someone struggling with addiction is, you know, I love you. Um, I care about you. I don't want to see you die. Um, there's lots of places out there that will help you, um, stay, get clean. Um, there's tons of resources nowadays. I remember when I first got clean, there wasn't as many resources as there is now, you know, but if, if a needle junkie like me can change their life and get clean and, and, and man, have one of the most beautifulest lives I've ever had, you know, like I've got the best friends in the world now. Like I said, I'm a peer support specialist, substance abuse counselor, got a career. My life's really grand. You know, they we're not promised all that good stuff. You know, only thing we can be promised is freedom from active addiction, you know. But if you're struggling, reach out for help. There's people out here that want to help you. I understand also there's people out here that want to condemn you and talk bad about you. But there's also people out here that love and care about you. Your family loves and cares about you. And we want to help you get clean and stay clean one day at a time. So just know if nobody else has told you today, I love you and I care about you. And uh, if I can help, I will. Thanks. Detox to Rehab wants to help as many people as possible and do it the right way. Please subscribe, comment, and like our channel. Thank you for watching.